Hello, this is the American Medical Association's Moving Medicine video and podcast. Today, we're joined by Dr. Aletha Maybank, the AMA's Senior Vice President and Chief Health Equity Officer in New York to discuss AMA's critical work in advancing health equity. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Dr. Maybank, it's great to have you back. I know I'm gonna ask you to think pre-COVID, way back to when you first started back in 2019, uh, when the AMA first established its Center for Health Equity, I don't think anybody could have predicted what was coming with a pandemic and how that was going to amplify so many inequities in healthcare. Why don't you start off by talking about how AMA has supported COVID-19 equity work and strategies throughout the pandemic? Uh, great. And, and hi, Todd. Uh, good to be um, back on the show. Um, and congratulations to all the success that you've had, I think, in just amplifying and communicating with um, physicians and, and other health providers across the country. So just really thank you for um, the work and your efforts. You know, as you said, you know, it had no sense that this was going to happen, you know, um, as it relates to COVID. Um, and it's definitely um, centered attention on inequities and equity. And it's been on one end really kind of helpful for the work and elevating the platform. And then on the other end, just really this tremendous sense of urgency and demand to make sure that we're doing something, we're in the right place and we're showing up in the ways that we need to. Um, and it's it's been challenging, but I would say, you know, over the course of, especially this last year of 2021, you know, the team and the center, we participated in hundreds of presentations and panels and, and events from across, you know, the national healthcare ecosystem and popular media just to really, you know, one, put our footprint out there, I think as AMA to say that this is in a space that we are, and we are here, you know, to help. And, and as you, you you say, to kind of be the physician's um, powerful ally, you know, in this space and figuring out best ways to be responsive to COVID-19. You know, we were able to really continue and expand our prioritizing equity series on, on YouTube um, that brings uh, experts together um, in the space of equity ranging from a whole bunch of topics of people with disabilities, Latinx communities, LGBTQ communities, talking about trustworthiness and vaccine equity. Um, at the height of the pandemic, we actually had this opportunity to meet with the White House COVID-19 um, Health Equity Task Force to advise them on some equitable strategies for preparedness and response, especially as it related to physicians and the healthcare community. And then, you know, lastly, it's not the last and only thing, but one of the other, I think, big contributions that we've been having is really thinking about, you know, healthcare transformation and, and at the intersection of equity and emergency preparedness and response. So we've partnered with the American College of uh, Preventive Medicine um, through a CDC funded opportunity to help support um, uh, physicians of color across the country to one really document, you know, what are the equity strategies um, that they have been using over this particular time. So there's a lot that's been happening and on, on the kind of radar out there for us as AMA. I remember uh, when the pandemic first started and you were one of the first uh, folks we spoke to and this issue about uh, the need for more race and ethnicity data, uh, not just in vaccine distribution, but this was kind of way before that and just understanding like the numbers. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, uh, as this has become you know, more in focus, what have you learned about uh, the data and what have you been able to kind of drive forward in terms of awareness of why this is so important? Yes, I mean, I think we have learned and we've had this tremendous opportunity at this time to really name the importance of having systems, infrastructure, the will um, uh, and the imperative to collect race and ethnicity data. We can't just leave it to the side. We can't just have all of this missing data, not only missing data, inaccurate data. And we've been working with you know, larger entities like the Association of American Medical Colleges, as well as ACGME to kind of really think through how do we strengthen how we do as institutions um, collect race and ethnicity data and therefore influencing really the larger healthcare ecosystem. But also, I think it's just really important that we recognize that, you know, AMA, you know, through our policy and our House of Delegates and membership, you know, supports the consider of race and ethnicity as a marker for increased disease, you know, in the allocating scarce resources um, in this time of COVID and for treatments of, of COVID just due to the historical context of, of racism. Um, however, we know that race and ethnicity should not be used only as like a proxy 
for biology and genetics. It's a social construct. It changes over time. It will continue to change. And so we have to really be conscious of that. And so it's not to say that we don't want race and ethnicity data to be collected and analyzed. It should be, it needs to be. But we also need to make sure and recommend that clinicians understand and focus on the experience of, of racism in people's lives. This system that we know discriminates and excludes um, uh, many people and therefore harms. And we've put forward policies um, that really focus on, you know, the valuable opportunities that we have in resource, I mean, in, in research, kind of what data um, hospitals need to collect and other organizations. We actually had this amazing opportunity through one of my team members, Fernando de Mayo, um, to contribute to Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's National Commission to transform public health data systems. And it was really grounded in principles of truth and racial healing. Um, and they were tasked to identify what changes need to happen in our data systems across the country um, to better position us to really understand these other structural drivers that we know impact health. And then we also released a data report um, as the Center for Health Equity and the AMA that really looked at um, the experiences of Black and Latinx and indig Indigenous physicians um, throughout the early part of the pandemic and really noted you know, that they are really experiencing great amounts of stress and burnout. We have a lot to learn, um, you know, and on that point, so much of uh, the work around equity begins with education, uh, both to improve health literacy and increase physicians' knowledge about social determinants of health. What are we doing to help educate physicians and patients so that more people can achieve optimal health? Yes, uh, thanks, Todd, for that question. And I think the way that the first part of how you frame that in terms of the context of liter literacy is how do we educate more physicians? You know, literacy is a, is a, there's a power dynamic in it. And I think that we as the physician community really has to take on this concept and context of, of health literacy and the responsibility of it. Um, you know, the rest of the population doesn't go to med school in the way that we do. And so if folks aren't understanding the information that we're putting forward, then that's upon us as a healthcare and physician community to figure out how to break it down better you know, and, and to, to understand, you know, very well, you know, marketing um, and communications is key, you know, to helping support people to understand information and to buy into information. And so that's upon us to do, I think, as, as a health community. And we have to change that narrative um, to shift away that, you know, it's about how do we help patients or, or put the responsibility upon patients um, solely to understand health information. And so, you know, I think we've released def definitely several communication documents, specifically as it relates to equity, whether it's the strategic plan that came out, as well as the narrative guide um, to understand better these power dynamics that um, really impact how people are able to digest and take up um, information. Uh, we have also worked really to support equipped physicians and other healthcare providers through our resources on the um, EdHub um, on our AMA site to get more information. And we're collaborating with partners such as the American College of Radiology and Stanford Healthcare, Howard Brown Health, Fenway Institute, COVID Black, um, to really develop a series of modules, again, through our AMA um, EdHub. And we, we actually now have 26 health-related and equity-related specifically modules that are covering topics from the use of race in medical research and equities in telemedicine, um, and just overall, you know, experiences of inequities that both physicians and pharmacists actually are experiencing. Um, we are releasing um, quality and safety and equity modules this coming spring. Um, and we're learning a lot, you know, in the opportunity to bring other leaders together um, to learn about experiences of what's happening across the country. How are they leading with an equity lens or an anti-racism lens? And we're partnering with the Groundwater Institute to help um, really train around um, these ideas around anti-racism work and just build a sense of community and confidence that we think is really important to lead in, in this work. Because oftentimes people feel isolated or they're fearful um, to lead and, and really engage in this work of equity and anti-racism. We mentioned earlier in, in, in your comments there, there is so much that we've learned, I think, through talking to so many different physicians that there's there's the part of the work and the challenges that we face, and then there's the entire communications part of that. And that's something your team has been really busy working on uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, you also mentioned the, uh, the work that you did uh, on the strategic guide. 
uh, that was launched earlier last year and kind of gives a roadmap for the work that you're really looking to achieve. Talk to us a little bit about kind of where you stand in that roadmap and what you see as kind of uh, the key uh, tentpole kind of things that you'll be looking at this year beyond what you've already mentioned. Yes, you know, so there's there's been there's been a lot. And so I would say, you know, the, the big thing was releasing the plan itself. I think the next thing, as I mentioned, was the guide. Um, you know, as a reminder, there are the kind of the five approaches um, to this guide. And I, I feel what really needs to happen and what we know, you know, we hear from physicians and healthcare systems, they want to learn clearly, you know, kind of the roots of inequities, where they come from, but they also want to have a sense of what it is it that they do. Um, and, you know, I think one of the major opportunities that we're going to really take on, you know, in 2022 is really develop a package for physicians and health systems to kind of in this envelope of like learn, practice and do racial justice and equity focused um, work and methods um, to help support this healthcare ecosystem. Um, and there will be different ways in which they kind of can engage um, within their ecosystem um, or their health system around equity work, but I, I feel the opportunity is provide different opportunities. Um, we will also, as I mentioned before, some of the work that we've been doing with um, the CDC around like emergency preparedness and response, we're gonna have a guide also to help support healthcare systems and figuring out how do you embed equity into your, your emergency um, response and preparedness efforts. There's a lot for the public health system overall, but not as much for the healthcare ecosystem. So a lot of our focus is really going to be on supporting healthcare systems and physicians to the, uh, of the actual practice of embedding equity and what does that look like? How do we hold ourselves accountable? But also how do we create community of practices also to learn from one another? Just digging in a little bit there, for, for those physicians out there that, that do want to learn more, about how to put equity to work in their practices and you know their everyday lives. What are some of those resources that you recommend uh, that they consult? Sure, absolutely. You know, I, and um, I mentioned earlier before. You know, the AMA um, ed Educational Hub or EdHub, we call it for short. You know, has a huge now health equity education center that's inclusive of lots of information and materials. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that folks go there. Um, we have information on what healthcare practices can do to implement, um, you know, an anti-racism lens or an equity lens to the work that they're doing. The prioritizing equity series also is on there and you can get CME credit. And that's conversations with many different leading experts across the country um, in this space of equity. I already mentioned the narrative guide that we, we um, did with and published with uh, AAMC. And then there's just many thought leaders at this time. I think we're at a time where you know, there are a lot of books um, that have been written. Um, we now have access to many talks and webinars in ways that we couldn't before because we're, everything is, you know, kind of virtually. Um, and so, you know, we, we engaged as AMA with Heather McGee, um, the Some of Us, and we heard from her. Um, a team member of mine, you know, published a book and co-published a book called Unequal Cities. Um, there's another really interesting and I think uh, impactful book called Inflamed by Rupa Myra and, and Raj Patel. So there, there are a lot of opportunities, I think, to learn in a way that we haven't been able to um, as physicians. There's lots of information out there. Uh, for those of you who are interested in checking out the Prioritizing Equity series, you can find that on AMA's YouTube channel. And Dr. Maybank, thank you so much to you and your team. And we'll look forward to more work coming out in 2022. We need it. Uh, that's it for today's Moving Medicine video and podcast. Please click subscribe on our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of these episodes or check us out on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for joining us today. Please take care.